The boat ride on Lake Choga was smooth and the waters clear as we sailed along. Then we saw them a few minutes into the journey. Water birds resting in the middle of the lake as if they were ashore. A closer look reveals the birds relaxed on floating vegetation. We soon realized the floating vegetation is all over the lake and can be seen for miles. But this was not always the case on Lake Choga. The floating vegetation islands are a recent introduction by fishermen desperate to catch dwindling fish stocks. Uh, this habit started in Kamoli and Kayunga, that is in Kaongo landing site. That's where it was copped from. And then uh, because of the easy migration of the fisher folk or fisher, uh, fishermen, uh, they, the habit spread very fast. Now this right behind me is neither an island nor a sad. What it is is an anchored vegetation and this is how it happens. Now the fishermen usually come and cut it off the main sad and then they drag it all the way here and anchor it using two sacks of sand. Now what this does is that it creates an illusion for the fish that usually breed at the shore, making this a trap for the fishermen. The floating vegetation islands act as a false shore luring fish that breed on the shores due to the calmness of the waters around and safer haven for the fish eggs to fertilize. So they lay basket traps there or they, they, they surround it with nets. Now as fish, uh, when fish is on its way coming back on the shores to breed, it finds such an environment which is conducive for them to breed. So in an attempt to enter in, it's the, the, fish, the fish is trapped. The floating islands are held onto the lake floor by sacks of sand. But over time, and with the wear and tear, the sacks open, spilling the sand onto the lake floor, leading to silting. Yeah, because you are doing it manually by carrying uh, sand or bag from. Instead of the sand, which would go with the drainage channels, it is now being done manually, you are carrying it and taking it in the lake. So that this the process of siltation is fastening in that way. With time, the floating vegetation islands gradually rot away and drop onto the lake shore, also contributing to its degradation. This has a bearing on the ability of the fish to breed. The, the vegetation is anchored, it, it rots. It keeps on rotting. So this process of rotting or decomposition, it consumes a lot of oxygen. It depletes the lake from, uh, from oxygen. So in essence, there might be uh, fish kills, especially for, with the, for the eggs. The fish eggs, they are, they, are, they are killed in the process. The vegetation and the sand too displaces water within the lake, shifting the water levels. It displaces water from, from Lake Choga and it drives, it drives the, lake, the water to the Nile, into the Nile, and it is carried away. So in this, it, is, it is now uh, driving away the water and uh, leaving the lake shallower and shallower. But why do the fishermen continue with this practice yet? It is responsible for the decline of Lake Choga. They kind of now own that plot, that vegetation which has been anchored. They own it. So one is assured that whatever fish that comes in, in that vegetation is mine. And there are several incidences of fighting over such a resource. Another downside of this is the destruction of the ecosystem around the lake as the fishermen deplete the vegetation cover to make the floating islands. Beside, this is the introduction of dry land grasses onto the sides of Lake Choga. So they keep on cutting and cutting and they, in the end they, 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 there is that change of the ecosystem. The, the original vegetation keeps on disappearing and then you find other grasses like cynodon, dactylon, which comes in later on uh, with the disappearing of the papyrus. And you know papyrus is very good at uh, controlling 
uh, the waves. These practices are meant to enhance the fish catch, but in the process, this has increased the pressure to catch young fish, leading to the increased use of undersized nets to catch the fish. On their part, the fishermen see any efforts by environment management authorities like NEMA as being denied the right to exploit a natural resource. If we find, since we cannot control the number of people going in, we can equally control uh, the, the time when they go there so that they give room or give time for the fish to breed. With a community management program now in place, it remains to be seen how soon the deplorable situation can be reversed. However, under the program, the fishing communities are being taught proper fishing methods. Perhaps this will in the long run help reverse the threat to fish species like tilapia, mudfish, clarius and silverfish that once called Lake Choga their home. At the moment, they are in danger of becoming extinct on the lake due to the constant fishing of the young, thus reducing the chance to breed and multiply. Craig Kadoda, NTV, Ecotalk.